Let's pick up with E empirical formula problems. Got my calculator and my three colors. <clears throat> uh, this is a very typical problem. Uh, it says a compound has the following elemental analysis. Um, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, three elements. And composition, 40.00%, uh, 6.69%, and 53.31% respectively. And uh, just like in the last video, this is percent composition by mass. And what that means is that out of, if we turn the definition of um, percent composition by mass sort of on its head, that out of every 100 grams, percent per 100 grams, so 40.00 grams will be carbon and the other two percents for hydrogen and oxygen. So percent composition by mass, we can really title this grams of each element per 100 grams of compound. Okay, um, so that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is if we know that the molar mass is around 120 grams per mole and 40% of that, 40.00% of that, is carbon, then 40% of 120 grams per mole is 40% would be 48 grams of carbon. So uh, we can do likewise where 40% means the percent means divide by 100, uh, of means times, and so 40%, 40 divided by 100 times 120, 6.69%, 8.03, and likewise. Sixty-three point nine seven, sixty-four point zero grams of oxygen. Now these are the grams, uh, but the formula is going to be in terms of moles. So we need to turn these grams into moles. We know from our periodic table that there are twelve point zero one grams per mole for carbon. And likewise, 1.008 and 1.008. And notice that I'm using O here when you're doing empirical formulas, uh, empirical formula type problems, you're going to just use O. Previously, I said that after uh, empirical formula problems, you will only see O2 actually written in chemical reactions, but it's, it's okay here. We are trying to find the number of oxygens, the number of O's, if you will, and so we will treat O's in formulas because they can come one at a time. Hopefully that makes sense. And for oxygen, it's 16.00 grams per mole. All right, let's multiply all these out. 48.0 divided by 12.01. 3.996, let's call that 4.00 moles C. Seven point nine seven moles of hydrogen and sixty four divided by sixteen is exactly four. And so, what this tells you 
is that in this formula, we have small whole numbers already. Doesn't always work out this nicely, but it did this time. C4, H, we can round 7.97 to 8. O4. And now, so that is not the empirical formula. It may be, and it, it will turn out to be the molecular formula uh, because we used the molar mass here. And when you incorporate the molar mass into the problem, you will typically, I can't think of any exceptions to this, get the uh, empirical formula. But let's double check. So if we take the molar mass of this, it's going to be four carbons, eight hydrogens, plus uh, four oxygens, I get 120. So this is the molecular formula. And to find the empirical formula, we're gonna get and reduce these to the smallest whole numbers, divide each one by four, and that is our empirical formula, okay? On the next page, we have a companion problem. So look for the answer key in the learning management system. Very similar, good practice. There are a couple different kinds of problems that are related to the one we just worked. This one is called a hydrate problem. A mineral contains a hydrate of nickel two sulfate with an unknown number of waters of hydration. We'll talk more about these, but for now, here is the formula for the hydrate where X is unknown. If a 0.400 gram sample of mineral, um, and that is what are, we're starting with, and good problem solving technique, synthesize all the material as you go. I know I have 0.400 grams of this substance. Uh, it is heated to constant weight over a Bunsen burner. Its mass decreases to 0.296 grams. So, uh, when heated, uh, the waters of hydration evaporate. Or are removed from the compound. So what is left is just the nickel 2 sulfate. No dot XH2O. This is also sometimes called the anhydrous form of this, but we don't need to know that. Now, if we know how much the whole mineral or the whole compound was, and we know how much the nickel sulfate was, nickel two sulfate, then the difference zero point one oh four grams is the mass of the H2O. And what's different about this than the last problem is that now we have grams of two compounds and we're instead of elements, but otherwise we're just trying to find the smallest whole number ratio between the two. And that means that we're going to do a similar process. We're gonna take the grams of each figure out the molar mass, and the molar mass for this one is uh, 154.8. And similarly for H2O, Molar mass of H2O, 18.02 grams H2O for one mole. Okay, now doing this math, 0.296 divided by 154.8, I get 1.9, well, my calculator gave it to me in scientific notation, which is lovely, but if I press mode nine on my calculator, it gives me uh, what I call regular numbers. 0 0.00191 moles of nickel 2 sulfate. And if I do something similar for the water, 0.104 grams divided by 
0 0.00577. Now, uh, if this problem works, and I think it does, now the last step is to divide by the smallest number of moles, which is this. And see if we get small whole numbers, small half numbers, or, or let's just see what we get here. So the point oh, oh, uh, well, this one's easy. We get one. And now, for the moment of magic, 0 0.00577 divided by 0 0.00191, 3.02. And so these are now in a 3.02, or 3 to 1 ratio. That means that x equals 3. And let's see, come back to the problem. What is the value of x for this hydrate? x equals 3. Uh, the empirical formula, if we were asked it, would be nickel uh, NiSO4.3H2O. And we'll talk about naming uh, hydrates in a future video. But the idea is, even though you only have two pieces of information, you can find the third. Another idea about these kinds of formulas, uh, these kinds of empirical formula problems, is that they always work out. So if you get something really random, and this has happened to me many times, I oftentimes get stuck trying to figure out how to get back to the beginning. And so I oftentimes will just take a new piece of paper and rework the problem instead of trying to, well, I'll look quickly to see if I can see an obvious mistake, but sometimes for me, blank slate, start it over again, see what happens. Also, confer with a friend, confer with a classmate. Ask them uh, so how they did the problem. Here's a, another um, water of hydration uh, hydrate problem. Uh, this one's about Epsom salts. This will be a companion problem. Uh, here's another empirical formula problem. Uh, Accutane is found to contain a certain percentage of carbon and hydrogen, with the remainder being oxygen. The new part of this one, mostly it's molar mass we have here, uh, the remainder being oxygen, of course, all the percents add up to 100%. So to find the percent oxygen, you're going to start with 100%. Subtract off the carbon percent, subtract off the hydrogen, and you'll be left with the oxygen, so 100 minus 79.95 minus 9.40, 10.65% oxygen. And now this problem is just like the one that we worked before the hydrate problem, and you've got percent carbon, percent hydrogen, percent oxygen, and let's see... This is a good one. Let's keep working it. So we have the 79.95% per, uh, percent, um, carbon of 300 grams per mole. Now I'm going to, in my head, move the decimal place over two places so that it's actually uh, 0.7995 of means times 239.85 I go with 239.9 grams of carbon leave a little space 9.40 move the decimal place over two places to get my fraction, 0940, 28.2, and 10.65%, no. <laughs> I better do it, 10.65% O, 
0 0.1065. Yeah, uh, in this course, if, to help me keep organized, always write it out. For me, it helps for sure. Times 300, 31.95. It is okay to keep an extra sig fig while you work, uh, especially in these problems. Now, I have my grams of carbon. The other thing I always do is I always take the time to write out my work and, and make sure that I can see how the units cancel. As my soccer coach used to say, practice like you intend on playing. Set it up, use the colors to tell the work apart. 239.9, right by, oop, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, let's try that now. 239.9, divided by 12.01. Keep an extra digit, why not? Well, yeah, no, that's a very large number. It stumps me at first. 27.98. Wait a minute. Something's up here, my apologies. 239.9 divided by 12.01. There we go, my apologies. 19.98 moles C, moles H, 31.95 divided by 16, 1.996. Okay, these are looking very much like well, if not small, the smallest possible small whole numbers, but let's see what we get here. Uh, if you're not sure, if they don't look like small whole numbers, always divide by the smallest one. And we get, oh, this one's going to be one. I'll keep track of my work down here now. C, 19.98. divided by 1.997, I'm gonna call that a 10, it says 10.005, 27.98, divided by 1.997, 14.01, H14, uh, one, that is now, uh, that's the smallest all numbers, that's our empirical formula. We used the 300 to get these masses. Um, we can also show that the empirical formula of the molar mass is going to be 10 times 12.01 plus 14 times 1.08 plus 16 times 1. That's 150 grams per mole. That means that if we double these, which is 20, 28 and 2. Either way you do it, you come out with C20H28O2 as the molecular formula. It has a molar mass of 300 uh, grams per mole, and uh, we're feeling pretty good about that. Very nice. Now our last type of problem that is similar, although has some new aspects, is what's called a combustion analysis problem. Combustion analysis is a process that burns, and here's our compound to be analyzed, our unknown sample, if you will, containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, uh, and sometimes other elements, as we'll see, in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and H2O. From this information, the empirical formula can be found add in the molar mass and the molecular formula can be found as well. Um, so the compound is burned, you have a substance that captures the water, the H2O, you have uh, a second substance that copies, ca captures the carbon dioxide, and then 
oxygen comes out the other side. A sort of summary of this process looks like this. If you take a compound here that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen with subscripts, and we don't know what those subscripts are, you add oxygen, you will produce carbon dioxide and H2O. Okay? And sort of the basis of this is that also on the product side, and we won't balance this, we won't be able to, as you can see, unused oxygen leaves, and so it'll be impossible to balance this currently uh, as we're writing it. But we can see that the carbon, all of the carbon on the reactant side, must end up as carbon dioxide. So I'm going to put an X coefficient here based on the X subscript here. And that just means oh, whatever this number is, it must be here as well. For the Y, the Y is the subscript here. In H2O, in water, or in water vapor as the case may be here, um, you're going to get hydrogens two at a time. So whatever the Y value subscript is here, the coefficient will be Y over two. And we won't be able to calculate the oxygen from this, but similar to the hydrate problems before and some other problems, if you know in this unknown how much unknown you have and how much carbon and hydrogen you have, you can figure out the oxygen. So that's the basis for this. Let's do an actual example. Tartaric acid is the white powdery substance that coats tart candies such as Sour Patch Kids. Not my favorite, but is one of my daughter's favorites. Combustion analysis of a 12.01 gram sample of tartaric acid, which contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, produces carbon dioxide in that amount, 14.08 grams, and some H2O. What is the empirical formula of tartaric acid? We don't have the molar mass for this one, so we won't be able to uh, find the molecular formula, but we will be able to find the empirical formula. In this particular example, we have a 12.01 gram sample of tartaric. Well, I'm gonna start with the 14.08 grams of carbon dioxide. This time, we're going to turn this into moles of carbon dioxide, the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01 grams per mole. And um, because we're interested in tracing back the amount of carbon in the unknown, I will put this step here, which says that in each mole of carbon dioxide, there's one mole of carbon. And therefore, my units at the end here will be moles of carbon I have 14.08 divided by 0 0.3199. And I will carry an extra sig fig. I actually have four sig figs. Um, I'm going to carry an extra sig fig. Sometimes it can help you get more precise small whole numbers. So it's okay to do that. Now I also need grams of carbon. So uh, let's change colors here. I have one mole of carbon, 12.01 grams carbon. And I will 0.3199 times 12.01. I get 3.842 grams carbon. I'm gonna repeat this process for the H2O, I get 4.32 that I start with 4.32 grams, molar mass 18.02. And this time, and this will make a big difference. In one mole of H2O, there are two moles of H.
0 0.4795. My color coding system goes astray. Oop. There we go. Made a mistake with the units, but I could quickly see that this was going to be a grams, and so I could cancel it out. Zero point four eight three three. grams of hydrogen. Okay, so like I said before, now we know our moles here for two of them. Um, we know our grams. We don't know our grams or moles of oxygen. The way in which we're gonna find that is we know the grams of sample. So I'm gonna write finding uh, oxygen. And this is a, a relatively common thing that we do. So know everything else and then subtract to find the last thing. We know that there's 12.01 grams of the sample. Ooh. And <laughs> want to do my picket fence there. Uh, we know that there's, we're gonna subtract off 3.842 grams of carbon. We're gonna subtract off the grams of hydrogen, and we're gonna find what's left. We get 7.68 to two decimal places. That'll have to be good enough. Grams of oxygen. And turn that into moles. All right, so this is a typical workup for a combustion analysis problem. We take our grams of things and turn them into moles, then take our moles of compounds and turn them into elements, and finally find oxygen. Let me gather up everything that I've got so far as far as finding my empirical formula. I'm gonna write it as C, 0.3199, H, 0.4833, O, 0 0.48, because I've got all my terms all scattered over here. And what I like to do is take the smallest number, divide through. It's the same trick we've done before for other problems. And now I get, clearly I get C1. H, 1.51, O, 1.50. Okay, we still do not have small whole numbers. We need small whole numbers. So this is a case where we've gotten half numbers. So we need to, uh, so this is not the empirical formula. We need to multiply the whole thing times two to find that the empirical formula is C2H3O3. Okay, and that is the empirical formula, and that's as far as we can go in this problem. Finally, we will now work the most complicated in, uh, combustion analysis problem that we can handle. You'll note that this has two different sample sizes and grams of carbon dioxide, H2O, and ammonia. It's an unknown powder that has been found at a crime scene. It is your job to identify the chemical formula. Chemical formula is another word for molecular formula and uh, for the substance and its common or generic name. Preliminary tests reveal that the possible, uh, possible elements can be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Okay. So combustion analysis, 
uh, has the following results. This is very similar to what we've done before, so we feel good about that. We'll talk about it in a minute. A separate analysis with a different sample size finds grams of ammonia, and grams of ammonia, this um, analysis that finds ammonia, this is, this ammonia contains all of the nitrogen in the unknown powder. And it's a separate process and we won't really get into specifics about it. Now we also have the molar mass, so we can find the chemical formula. All right. Now uh, I'll do a little bit of work here, but uh, we're going to continue on the next page in a minute. Let's start with this. We know our grams of uh, carbon dioxide, 4.9127. That's a lot of sig figs. And uh, for this particular problem, I will ask you to keep them, or at least a, a many of them. You know, there are 44.01 grams of CO2. One mole. And in one mole of carbon dioxide, there's one mole of carbon. We'll at least uh, squeeze in the bottom here. Similar results for the H2O. Let's see, uh, one mole H2O, two moles H. So nothing new here. Let's write it up though. We know that there's uh, 4.9127 divided by 44.01, and I get 0 0.116, 111, six, Moles C, and moles of carbon to grams of carbon, something we're going to be very familiar with. Multiply this number times 12.01, and I get 1.3406, 1 1.341 grams of carbon. Similarly, Zero point one five seven eight moles of hydrogen multiply zero point one five nine one grams hydrogen. All right, so that's what we got so far. Next, we're going to do two things. We're going to first do what's known as a scaling factor. The scaling factor will convert the grams of ammonia in a different sample size to the grams of ammonia in the sample size that we've already done our calculations on. So here we'll write scaling factor. We'll write that for uh, a 1.8000 000 000 gram sample. Mm. In that sample, there are X grams of ammonia, and that's what we're trying to find. We also know that in a 0 0.5000 gram sample, there are 0 0.0182. grams of ammonia. This is a scaling factor, scaling up in this case to find the grams of ammonia in our uh, comparable sample for carbon and uh, hydrogen. To solve this, we cross multiply 0 0.0182 times 1.8 divided by 0.5, we get 0 0.06552, well, we'll go to three sig figs. Grams of ammonia. 
And like I said, this is the grams of nitrogen. So inside this ammonia is the grams of nitrogen and are unknown. We will now do something very similar for nitrogen. The molar mass of ammonia, 17.03. and in one mole of ammonia, there is only one mole of nitrogen. Point oh six five five divided by 17.03. Back in scientific notation, and then I convert to regular numbers. Zero point zero zero three eight five moles of nitrogen and molar mass of nitrogen fourteen point oh one zero point zero five three nine grams of nitrogen. Okay. So we've added in the nitrogen, we've accounted for it, we still haven't done our oxygen. Similar to other problems, you still have to do the oxygen last. Looking at our data, we have a sample size of 1.8 grams, 1.800. And we'll put this under the heading of finding oxygen. Much different than finding Nemo. We have our sample size. We have from previous work, on the previous page, 1.341 grams carbon. Subtract that off. Subtract off one, 0 0.1591 grams hydrogen. Subtract off our grams of nitrogen. And the hardest thing about this is staying organized. This is a long problem. And you, if you grab the wrong number at this point, it will throw you off. Hopefully I'm good. Hopefully all my calculations have been good so far. I take my 1.8, 1.341, minus 0 0.1591, minus 0 0.0539, 0 0.246 grams of oxygen. Turn that into moles of oxygen. And we're almost there. Zero point zero one five three eight. No, three six six. Zero point zero one five four. All right. So now we have moles of everything. Again, I like to stay organized. Go back. Find my moles of carbon, find my moles of hydrogen, double check to make sure that I've got the right numbers. Uh, I'm gonna do nitrogen next, though the exact order doesn't affect how I will grade it. All right, so now I've got all my moles in one place. Looking at this, Looks like nitrogen is my smallest number. That's my key to finding hopefully small whole numbers. All right, so now let's do this bit of math. Uh, I know that N is going to be 1, C is going to be 0 0.1116 divided by 28, ooh, C, 28.99, H is an even bigger number. Forty point nine eight. I like my nice one. Uh, uh, oh. Huh. It says four, but I'll write four point zero zero since it was math. And believe it or not, 
these are whole numbers. They are not, again, that small. So C, 29, H, 41, N, O, 4, N, 1, or N, O, 4. Uh, that is our empirical formula. We can add this up to show that it does turn out to have a molar mass very close to 468 grams per mole. This is not only our empirical formula, it is also our molecular formula. And from here, and again, always reflect back on the question. This question, and, and there is a similar one on the homework, this question asks you to find the common or generic name, and that is part of what is graded for this problem. And I will leave that to you, uh, to Google. I will only say that there are a number of uh, names that are possible for this. Usually it's a good idea to take the top-ranked, non-sponsored <laughs> Google one um, because that's the most popular one and that's the most common one. And this was found at a crime scene. And so uh, it will, it's probably a popular chemical. That's it for that one. Let's see. When a 10-gram sample of an unknown organic acid is subjected to combustion analysis, this is a companion problem. Uh, and a good one to practice, and more workspace, and we are done.